Alright, so nandito na tayo sa huling tatlong lesson natin ngayong grade 10, no? And then, nandito na tayo sa fourth grading. And then, sa fourth grading na ito, we must talk all about the higher, di naman sa higher, literally, as a higher, kumbaga mas um, pinahirap lang na um, na pag-aaral or ng concept pag dating sa chemistry, no? At isa na dito yung gas loss, no? So, yung next two lessons, malalaman nyo na lang sa mga susunod natin mga video sa abang abang-abangan nyo na lang. And then, dito sa video na ito, we must talk all about the um, different kinds of gas loss, no? And then, um, this lesson offers interesting discussion about gases. Most gases are invincib- invisible, We can name as many solids and liquids that we see around us, but not gases. It is only the few. It is only the very few colored ones, like the black smoke produces by smoke belchers that can be seen. No, unseen gases are present. To name a few, in a bottle that seems to be empty, into the production of food by the plants, and even in playing our favorite sports. Can you play your favorite sports like volleyball and basketball without the ball sufficiently filled with air or gas? Malamang hindi, di ba? Uh, hindi. Siyempre, hindi tayo makagamit ng, uh, ng bola ng volleyball or basketball nang wala siyang hangin, di ba? Or wala siyang sufficient air. Para, kailangan na sufficient air para makapaglaro tayo, di ba? Then, even our very own existence required the presence of unseen gases. We take in oxygen and we exhale carbon dioxide. Can we survive here on Earth without the desirable gases which supports life? No? You learned in grade 8 that like other solids and liquids, gases are also made up of molecules that behave differently. Most of, most of the properties of gases can be attributed to the random and scattered arrangement of its molecule. Makita, um, nakita na natin siya nung kayo ay grade 8 pa lamang no? kung ano yung mga movement ng molecules. Diba? Mas malaya nakakagalaw ang mga molecules sa gas. Which are located as far as way as far away as possible from each other because they have very weak intermolecular force of attraction. So, ayan. Proceed na tayo sa next topic natin. So, ito yung mga topics natin. So, pressure, Boyle's law, Charles law, Gay-Lussac's law, combined gas law, ideal gas law, and then kinetic molecular theory of gases. Then, nandito na tayo sa pressure. So, ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng pressure? It is one of the most distinct properties of gases is that they exert pressure on their surroundings. For example, when we blew into the balloons, he was filling it with air with the, which exerted pressure on the elastic walls of the balloons, making them bigger and firmer. This is also why fizz is heard and when, and when we see an opening a bottle or can of soft drinks, pressure is released from the container. We agree on saying that even the gases around us have pressure. For example, air exerts pressure when it tires. The gases in the atmosphere exert pressure on the surface of the earth too. This is called atmospheric pressure. No? Or <coughs> yung, um, yung kanyang um, unit is ATM. No? Ayan, itong ATM na to. Mamaya malalaman nyo rin. So, yung barometer... Um, ito yung device na ginagamit para ma- masukat natin yung atmospheric pressure which was invented in 1643 sa pamagitan ng isang Italianong scientist na si Evangelista Torricelli. This device was made by filling a long, narrow glass tube with liquid mercury and inverting it into a dish, dish of mercury. Pero wala, um, wala akong makitang maganda-gandang example sa ngayon ng barometer na may mercury content. No? Pero at, ayun lang yung pinakita ko. In terms of atmospheric pressure, no? and then bago nga pala tayo dyan, no? tandaan natin na the change in the level of mercury in the glass tube is proportional to the pressure of the air around it. When the atmospheric pressure rises, the mercury in the tube also rises. Likewise, the mercury goes down when the atmospheric pressure goes down too. So, ibig sabihin nito, meron silang direct proportional they're directly proportionate to each other. So, yung atmospheric pressure, it is a result of the mass of air being being pulled toward the center of the earth by gravity, which is basically a measure of the weight of the air. So, 
any changes in the weather conditions cause the atmospheric pressure to vary thus the height of the mercury in the column also varies a low pressure area means that the atmospheric pressure is decreasing which usually signals an approaching storm it also varies with altitude for example if Torricelli's barometer was set up in Baguio City where the elevation is approximately 4875 feet the mercury inside the column uh, um, with only measure around 640 millimeter because the air up there is thinner this basically means that there is less air pushing down the surface of the high place like um, Baguio City that uh, that off places at sea level such as Manila hindi lang nun, but, but yung example na sinabi ko hindi naman siya limited doon pati rin dito sa example natin no? na ginamit natin yung example yung Mount Everest no? at tinatermine natin yung kanyang average sea level pressure yung kanyang um, yung kanyang altitude or yung height as well as yung um, yung kanyang pressure in terms of atmospheric pressure na ginamit natin unit as of this moment is kilopascals no? yung K stands for kilo and then yung PA na ito is yung pascals or pascal <coughs> in terms of units of pressure na ginagamit natin there's a lot of instruments used to measure pressure that contain mercury the units of pressure are expressed based on the height of the mercury inside the column that the gas pressure can support the unit mmhg or millimeter of mercury is also known as tor in honor of Torricelli. some unit conversions are given below so yung one standard the atmosphere no or one in some other textbook one atmospheric pressure or ang iba pang textbook sinasabi dito na one standard atmos atmospheric pressure ibig sabihin yun 1 atm ang equivalent nun and then sa 1 atm equivalent nito yung 760 millimeter of mercury and then sa value na ito magkasing equal lang sila ng 7 ng ng tor or 760 tor and then in terms of pascal kung i convert mo siya magiging 101,325 pascals no or should we say ang ginagawa ng iba hina talagang inexpress nila into a scientific notation na lumalabas 1.01 times 10 no to the 1 2 3 4 1 times 0 1 1.01 times 10 to the positive 5 pascals. No? Pero mas gugustuhin ko muna mag maging detailed muna yung ano natin. Yung value ng pascals natin. When, once na na-convert natin ito sa mga ganitong class ng value. And then sa SI unit ng pressure is pascals. No? Um, with um, with um, through the owner no? of, uh, of our very own place pascal. Another unit of pressure commonly used in engineering and physics used for measuring tire pressure is PSI or pounds per square inch. So, one, so yung 1 atm is, is equivalent to 14.69 PSI. Sometimes, one unit of pressure needs to be converted to another unit. Therefore, knowing each other or knowing each unit conversion factor is helpful in learning about pressure. <coughs> for example, after a car tire is filled with air, a pressure gauge is used to measure the air pressure inside it. The gauge reads 31 PSI. To convert PSI to atmosphere, use the following conversion factor. No? So, which can also be written as, ayan, 1 atm over 14.69 PSI. And therefore, yan, nakita natin, 31 PSI times 1 atm divided by 14.69 is equals to 2.11 atm so alam naman natin no i-cancel out natin yung same unit and then para makuha natin yung value from psi into atm to convert atm to tor use the following conversion factor which is eto na nga and then we must compute it and we must rewrite as 1 atm divided by or 1 atm over 760 tor and therefore yan 2.11, tama ba? 2.11, ayan. 2.11 atm times 760 tor divided by 1 atm is equals to 1,600 tor. Or cancel out natin yung mga same units and then, ayan, yung 1,600 1, tor, no? is, um, kung gusto natin itong um, express sa scientific notation, 
magiging ganito yung response niya. 1.6 times, ganito yung magiging answer niya. So, 1.6 times 10 to the positive 3 door. Bakit naging positive 3 yung ano niya? Yung uh, naging exponent niya? That because we must move it to the left. No? Kapag scientific notation, no? kapag i-express natin sa ganyan, kapag papunta ka dito sa left location, magiging positive. Ne? Kapag pumunta ka sa right, magiging negative yan. Pero papunta tayo sa right, diba? So, 1, 2, 3. No, so, yung magiging, magiging result nito ng ating scientific notation is 1.6 times 10 to the positive 3 tor. Finally, to convert tor to pascals, use the conversion factor just like this. 760 tor times I is equals to 101325 pascals. So, ayan. Therefore, 1,600 tor times 101325 pascals divided by 760 tor is equals to 200 10,000 pascals. Cancel out the same units and then express into a scientific notation at bakit siya naging positive 5 yung kanyang exponent that because of this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No? So 2.1 times 10 to the positive 5 pascals. No? So another conversion factor that you can use is ATM to pascals is given by 1 ATM is equals to 1, 101,325 pascals. So ayan. 2.11 ATM times 101.325 Pascals divided by 1 ATM is equals to parang ganun lang din. Same lang din naman siya. Ang answer. Ayan. So the numbers in the conversion factor have at least four significant figures in the final answer. So we must move on to the Boyle's Law. Ayan. So ano yung meron sa Boyle's Law? So ito yung na-formulate ni Robert Boyle who pioneered the study of the relationship between the volume and pressure of trapped gases. Now, this law states that the volume of the gas is inversely proportional to the pressure provided that its amount and temperature are unchanged. Ito yung mathematical representation ng Boyle's law. But before that, kapag sinabi natin inversely proportional, um, salungat sila sa value ng bawat isa. Yung isa, mataas yung value. Or yung isang variable, sabihin natin, yung temperature is mataas. Yung volume is um, yung Yung volume is, hindi, not temperature. Yung, kung yung pressure ay mataas, yung volume ay mababa. No? So, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is yung pressure and volume. No? In temperature, hindi pa siya kasama as of this moment. Kasi, yun na nga, its amount and temperature are unchanged. So, ibig sabihin, they're constant. No? Ang kinakailangan lang natin is yung pressure at saka volume. Okay. So, ayan, no? Um, yung boils, no? In the equation above, yung P1, ito yung initial pressure of the gas. Then yung P2, ito yung final pressure ng gas. And then yung V1, ito yung initial volume ng gas. And then V2, ito yung final volume ng gas. A J tube, no? Um, is similar to what boil used in his experiments. The pressure on the trapped gas can be increased by adding or removing mercury from the tube. Also, when plotted, the graph will be curved approaching the vertical and horizontal axis of the graph but not touching them. So, ayan. Nakikita ninyo sa value ng, uh, sa table na ito, nasa lungat yung nakukuha nating mga value ng pressure at volume as you observe, di ba? Ayan. They're inversely proportional with each other which uh, which stains in this graph that, they're, that the line is curved approaching the vertical and horizontal axis dito sa graph but not touching them. So, in terms of sample pressure, sample problems in Boyle's law, magkakaroon mo na tayo ng rearrangement of equation para hindi na tayo mahirapan. So, what if nawawala si P1 at si P2? So, yung P1 muna. So, ayan. <coughs> so, ayan yung form yung formula talaga na nandoon or yung equation na nandoon. Then, what if kung si P1 ay nawawala? So, ang gagawin natin, um, parang, na, ito na yun eh. Ito na yung lumabas. No? Nandito na siya. So, kailangan natin i-eliminate yung katabi ng P1, which is yung V1. So, ibaba, um, kailangan natin kopihin sa magkabilang um, dulo sa baba para malagyan natin ng denominator yung mismong, um, yung mismong equation na ito. So, cancel natin yung V1. So, <coughs> Another na lang is yung P1. So, yung sagot natin is yung P1 no, is equals to P2 V2 divided by V1. So, ito yung answer dito sa 
um, equation na ito. Yan yung formula na gagamitin natin for P1. And then sa P2, same lang din naman siya. Um, since nandito yung P2, and then kailangan natin eliminate yung katabi niya. No? So, ilalagay natin siya sa denominator, then we must copy it out. No? So, cancel out the same unit. No? So, ang magi magiging answer niya is P2 is equals to P1, V1, divided by V2. So, ayan. What if sa V1 at sa V2 naman? No? So, yung V1, cancel out natin yung P1, kailangan natin itong ma-eliminate. Ayan. So, ang naman sagot is yung V1 is equals to P2, V2, is equals to P1. Kailangan natin eliminate yun para makita natin kung ano yung mga, kung ano yung magiging formula na gagamitin natin at kailangan natin i-apply ang gantong process no? para hindi na tayo mga nga papa pag tayo ay nagmagko-compute pa sa susunod na um, sample problems. Then sa V2, same process lang din. Kailangan eliminate yung V2 yung, which is yung katabi ng V2. So, ayan. Magka magkaiba yung P2 at saka yung V2. ba? Diba? cancel out natin. So, yung tamang sagot is yung P1, V1 is equals to ay, P1, V1 divided by P2. Para makuha natin yung value ng final volume natin. So, sample problem number 1. Um, a sample of gas occupies 380 milliliter under a pressure 4 or 1.4 atm if the temperature is held constant. What volume would the sample occupy under the pressure of 1.8 atm? No? Medyo namamalat lang. So, ito yung given natin. So, yung given natin, yung initial pressure natin is 1.4. Ang final pressure natin is 1.8 atm. Since atm yung nakalagay dyan. And then, yung V1 natin is 380 milliliter. No? Since wala tayong nasabing um, value ng V2, Ayan, no? So, yun yung hanapin natin. And then, yung equation na, re na rearrange na natin at ito yung magiging answer niya. So, ayan. So, yung solution, ayan, V2 is equals to, nireplace na natin, ha? Yung P1, which is 1.4, and then yung V1 is 380 milliliter, and then yung P2 is 1.8 atm. Ayan. Ayan, so, multiply ko 1.4 times 380 then the answer is 532 milliliter divide natin siya sa 1.8 is equals to 296 milliliter so ayan na po yung answer niya <coughs> so last sample problem no so nagbigay lang ako ng dalawang sample problem dito so if you have 5.6 milliliter of gas in a piston at a pressure of 1.5 atm and compress the gas until its volume is 4.8 milliliter. What will the new pressure inside the piston be? So, ayun yung given. Yung initial pressure natin is 1.5 atm. Yung initial volume is 5.6 milliliter. Ang final volume natin is 4.8 milliliter. Then, yung required is P2. Equation is ito. Ayan. P2 is equals to P1 V1 divided over V2. So, ayan. So, I-replace na natin siya. No? So, yung P1 is 1.5. And then, multiply natin siya sa V1, which is 5.6. Then, cancel out the same unit. And then, yung minultiply natin, ang answer niya is 8.4 atm. No? Tama ba? 8.4? Let me check. no But, I think yun talaga yun. So, 1.5 times 5.8. Yun nga, tama nga. 8.4 ang lumabas sa akin. And then, divide natin siya sa 4.8. So, yung tamang sagot is 1.75 um, ATM. So, yun yung kanyang final pressure. Ayun lamang po. So, proceed na tayo sa Charles Law. Ayan. So, in Charles Law, describing how gases tend to expand when heated was formulated by Joseph Lewis K. Um, in 1802 but he credited it to unpublished work by Jacques Carlos. Um, he developed several inventions including a hydrometer and reflecting goniometer and improved the Graves and Heliostat and Fahrenheit's aerometer. This law states that if the amount and pressure 
are fixed, the volume of the gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. This can be expressed mathematically. The V1 over T1 is equals to V2 over T2. <coughs> Whereas yung T1, ito yung initial absolute temperature ng gas. T2, ito yung final absolute temperature ng gas. And then yung V1, ito yung initial volume ng gas. And then yung V2 is final volume ng gas. Note that whenever two measurements are directly proportional to each other, the ratio at the initial condition will always be equal to the ratio at the final condition. Also, if a graph is plotted, it will be, you know, mali ako ng type, it will be a straight line pointing away from the origin of the graph. So, yun, know, naobserba ninyo. Mas, uh, mas lumagpas siya sa graph and then mas na-achieve niya yung mas natin niya yung tinatawag natin na absolute temperature na negative 273 in terms of parang <coughs> in terms of um, absolute temperature and I think it is the value na rin yata ng Kelvin correct me if I am wrong no? so and nandito na tayo sa sample of problems no? ng Charles no? <coughs> Meron akong dalawang process na ipapakita sa inyo. <coughs> Ayan. So, ang ginawa ko dyan, so, gusto ko mahanap si V1. So, ang ginawa ko, yung T1 na yan, yung T1 na gusto ko mawala sa ano na yan, sa portion na yan, at ginawa ko parang kinaros multiply ko lang siya ng medyo mabilisan. And then, yung, gusto ko ma-eliminate yung T1, no? Kasi, nandun siya sa portion ng V1. Ayan. So, ayan na yung naging outcome niya. And then, yung tama sagot is V1 is equals to um, T1 V2 over T2. So, ang nangyari dito, yung T1 na yan, hindi ko siya nilagay muna dito sa denominator. Nilagay ko siya dito sa taas. No? Kasi, parang ang ginawa ko, nag-cross multiply ako. As well as, pati na rin dito. In-eliminate yung V2 kasi yun yung katabi ng um, yun yung possible na magiging katabi ng V2. So, ayun yung ginawa ko. So, ang gagamitin natin for V2 is equals to T2 V1 V, T2 V1 over T1. So, ayun yung equation na gagamitin natin pag nawala yung si initial volume at saka si final volume. Then sa T1. So, ayan. Ang ginawa ko, sinaros multiply ko na siya. V1 T2 is equals to, is equals to T1 um, is equals to T1 V2. Ayan. So, kailangan ko magkaroon ng elimination process. Since T1 na nawawala, cancel out kong V2. So, on the right answer is T1 is equals to V1 T2 over V2. As well as pati na rin dito, kailangan kong eliminate sa V1 kasi T2 na yung hahanapin natin. So, ang ating gagamitin is T2 is equals to T1 V2 over V1. So, ayan. Para mas, uh, mas maging maayos. So, ayan yung formula na gagamitin natin din yung sa sample problem, i-apply na natin lahat ng mga rearrange equation, equation dyan para hindi na tayo maghahagil ang paano pagdating dun sa equation part kung ano yung formula na gagamitin natin. So, sample problem number 1, a 22 degree Celsius and 4 ATM ay give, a given sample of a gas occupy 75 liters. What is its volume when its, when its temperature is 46 degree Celsius? So, yung given natin, since Celsius siya, kailangan natin i-apply yung yung value ng Kelvin. So, ang ginawa ko, ay pinag-plus ko siya sa 273. So, 22 degrees Celsius plus 273 is equals to 295 Kelvin. Kinonvert na natin siya into Kelvin. Yun yung, yung value ng kanyang initial temperature. And then, yung final temperature niya, pinag-plus ko lang yung 46 at saka 273 is equals to 319 Kelvin. Then, yung volume natin is 75 liters. Required is V2 and then yung sa equation is ayan. V2 is equals to V1 T2 over T1. And then, yung solution natin, medyo nauna na yung answer, no? So, cancel at the same unit. Ipag-multiply ipag natin itong 75 at saka 319. Ito na yung lumabas, 23,925 liters, no? Divided by 295 is equals yung, kan yung value ng V2 or yung final volume niya is 81.1 liters. Ayan. If 15 liters of neon, neon yan, ha? kung naalala nyo pa yung sa periodic table at 25 degrees Celsius is allowed to expand to 45 liters what must be the new temperature be to maintain constant pressure so given yan, kinonvert natin siya in, from Celsius to Kelvin 298 na siya no? 298 Kelvin yung kanyang T1 or yung initial temperature 
Then yung V1 is 15 liters. Yung V2 is 45 liters. Required natin is yung T2. Then yung equation natin is T2 is equals to V2, T1, and then V1. Ayan yung magiging equation natin. And then yung answer natin, ay yung solution natin, cancel out the same unit which is the liter. 45 times 298 Kelvin is equals to 13 point, ay 13,410 Kelvin divided by 15 is equals to 894 Kelvin as the final temperature natin. Ayan. So nandito na tayo sa gay lusak slow. So... Sa gay, sa gay Lusak's law, ang naka-formulate ng, or naka-discover ng gantong klaseng law ay si Joseph Louis, Louis Gay Lusak, was a French chemist and physicist. He is known mostly of his discovery that water is made of two parts, hydrogen, two parts of hydrogen and then one part ng oxygen with Alexander von Humboldt for two laws related to gases and for his work on alcohol water mixtures which led to the degrees he used to measure alcoholic beverages in many countries. And this law states that if the amount of and volume are constant, the pressure of the gas is directly proportional to the temperature at ito yung mathematical representation ng gantong law. No? Katulad lang din siya ng Charles law. No? Pero ang variable na ginamit na ginagamit or tinedetermine natin dito is yung pressure at saka yung temperature. For us, yung T1, ito yung initial temperature. And then yung sa T2, ito yung final absolute temperature. They're both absolute temperature rather. And then yung P1, initial pressure ng gas. And then sa P2, ito yung final pressure ng gas. It states that the pressure of a given amount of gas held at held at constant volume is directly proportional to the Kelvin, Kelvin temperature. If you heat a gas, you give the molecules more energy so they move fast. This means more impacts on the walls of the container and an increase in the pressure. So they are di directly proportionate to each other. No, Base sa nakakita ninyo, may straight line kayo nakakita dyan sa graph na yan. So ibig sabihin, kapag umaangat ang value ng temperature, mas umaangat yung value ng pressure. Ayan. Sample problems ng gay lusak low, no? or gay lusak slow. So, ito. Bago nga pala tayo mapunta sa sample problem, nandito na naman tayo. Same process lang din. Ayan. So, sa P1, no? ang gagamitin nating equation is P1 is equals to T1 P2 over T2. And then, sa, pre sa final pressure, cancel natin yung um, ayan, yung T2. At ang formula na gagamitin natin is yung P2 equals T2 P1 over T1. And then sa T1, uh, or initial temperature, ito yung formula na gagamitin natin, T1 is equals to P1 T2 over P2. And then sa T2, ayan, T2 is equals to T1 P2 over P1. No? Ganyan yung formula na gagamitin natin. And then yung sample problem number 1, a 5 liter container is filled no, with a gas to a pressure of 2.3 atm at 0 degrees Celsius. At what temperature will the pressure inside the container be at 2.5 atm? Ayan. So, since final temperature nawawala, so ito yung given natin yung initial temperature natin is 273. Then, pinag-plus lang naman natin from 0 to 273. Ganun lang kasi simple ang ating initial temperature. Then, yung initial pressure is 2.3 atm. And then, yung final pressure natin is 2.5 atm. Yung nire-record natin or yung hinahanap natin is yung tem final temperature. Ang equation is ganito. Ang gagamitin natin P2 is equals to T1 P2 over P1. Solution. Cancel out the same unit. Then multiply natin yung 273A multiply by 2.5 atm. Then pag minultiply na natin i-divide na natin ito sa 2.3. No? So the right answer is uh, 296.74 Kelvin or 297 Kelvin or Kung i-convert natin sa degree Celsius, magiging 24 degree Celsius siya. Ayan. And then, sample problem number 2. Hina ko si Jus, uh, bank of oxygen tank reads 900 millimeters of mercury while on her boat where the temperature is 27 degree Celsius when she dives down to the bottom of an unexplored methane lake on a recently discovered moon of Neptune, the temperature will drop down to one, negative 183 degrees Celsius. What will the pressure in her backup tank be at that temperature? So, nakalimutan ko maglagay ng question mark dito. <laughs> no, so, yung pressure na nawawala. So, yung initial temperature natin, ganito lang yan ha. Ipagpa-plus na, na lang natin sila ito 273. 
So, initial temperature is 300 Kelvin and then yung T2 is 90 Kelvin and then yung P2 is 900 millimeters of mercury. Then, record this yung P2 at ito yung equation na hahanapin natin. P2 is equals to T2, P1 is equals to P1. Ayan. Then, yung solution natin, um, yung P2 natin, ay yung P2, or yung, para mahanap natin yung P2, kailangan natin i-cancel out muna yung same unit and then 90 multiplied by 900 millimeters of mercury. No? Parang may mali ako, no? Ayan, nabago ko na. <laughs> Ayan, no? So, 81, oh, 81,000 81,000 millimeter mercury divided by 300. So, it's, it's, it is equal to 270 millimeter mercury. Yun yung final pressure natin. So, combined gas, lo, No? So, na-combine na dito lahat ng um, ng three variables na kailangan natin which is yung pressure, volume, and then temperature. So, the combined gas law ay kinombine ng tatlong gas law just like yung Boyle's law, Charles law, and then Gay-Lussac's law. It states that the ratio of the product of pressure and volume and the absolute temperature of a gas is equal to a constant. Unlike the name gas laws, um, the combined gas law doesn't have an official discoverer. It is simply a combination of uh, combination of the other gas laws that work when everything except temperature, pressure, and volume are held constant. But anyway, since nasabi ko yung sa Gay-Lussac, no, may iba kasi ako mga references na nakakita na um, yung Gay-Lussac's law, kinoconsider ng iba na ito daw ay Amonton's law. Siguro, um, for some reason, pero ang ginagamit ko talaga yung term is Gay-Lussac. Para mas malinaw. Kung sino talaga yung nakadiscover eh. So, alam niyo naman na yan, kung ano yung P1, tsaka P2, and then P1, and tsaka P2, and then yung V1, and tsaka V2. Alam naman natin yung differences ng initial at tsaka final value ng bawat variables na naan dito. Nandito na nga tayo sa rearrangement of equation. No? So, ang ginawa ko dito sa part na ito, na kung saan, um, nag-cross-multiply ako. No? So, yung T1, na mapupunta siya dito, sa ano sa part na ito and then yung T2 nandito na siya sa part na ito so nangyari dito P1 and then V1 magkasama sila ng P2 ayan napunta siya dito and then yung T1 napunta siya sa P2 and then V2 so para makita natin yung value ng T1 or yung initial absolute temperature niya kakancel out natin yung P2 at saka V2 sa paanong paraan so ayan kinapit out ko siya para magkaroon tayo ng proper denominator dito sa baba so P2 cancel out so, the last, um, ito na yung formula na gagamitin natin. Yung T1 is equals to T2, V1, V1 over P2, and then V2. Ganon din yung gagawin natin sa P2. Cancel out natin yung P1, at saka V1. Ayan. So, P2 is equals to T1, P2, V2, divided by P1, V1. Then, yung sa P1 at saka sa P2, same process lang din. Ito, ito yung formula na gagamitin natin for P1. And then, sa P2, um, hindi ko na ganun ini-explain na kasi um, sa totoo lang, um, ganun lang din yung nagiging, ano eh, nagiging explanation ko katulad ng una. So, pinakita ko lang sa inyo yung process. No? So, kina-cancel out lang natin ay cancel out no? yung mismong kalapit na, um, na variables niya para ma-determine natin kung ano yung hinahanap talaga natin na variable. Ganyan paghanapin natin si P2. Ha? Then sa volume, ayan, V1 is equals to T1, P2, V2 over P1 and then T2 and then same answer just like this yung V2 is equals to P1 V1 T2 over T1 P2 so ayan so ito na yung sample problems ng combined gas ko ayan so I think meron akong tatlong sample problems before tayo mag step up into an ideal gas lo. medyo may complication may, medyo mahirap lang siya ng konti <laughs> pero kaya natin yun so sample problem number 1 if 10 liters of oxygen at STP. So, anyway, yung STP, ito yung standard temperature and pressure. No? So, yung standard pressure natin is 180 m, and then yung standard temperature natin is 25 degrees Celsius. Kaya, nilagay ko na siya dito, baka magkaroon kayo ng confusion, di ba? Are heated to 512 degrees Celsius, what will be the new volume of gas if the pressure is also increased to 1,520 millimeter mercury? So, ayan, T1 tsaka T2, kinonvert ko siya into Kelvin and then, ang ginawa ko you know, from ATM you know, ang ginawa ko na lang kinonvert ko siya into 
millimeter mercury. Hindi ko siya literally kinonvert. Kung baga, ito lang yung um, standard value ng from a one atmosphere to millimeter mercury. Ayan lang. And then, P2 is 1,520 millimeter mercury. And then, yung V1 is 10 liters. Ayan. Then, yung record is yung final volume. And then, yung equation is, ayan, V2 is equals to P1, V1, and then T2 is equals to T1, and then P2. And then, um, ito na yung solution. Cancel out natin yung mga kakaparehas na, um, na units. Ayan. So, liter na lang ang natira since volume mga hinahanap natin. Multiply natin ang mga dapat na i-multiply. At ito na nga siya, 5,966,000 liter divided by 452,960 liter is equals to 13.17 liter or 13.2 liter kung gusto natin siyang i-round off. Yun na yung kanyang final volume. So, dito naman, a gas is heated from 263 Kelvin to 298 Kelvin and the volume is increased from 24 liters to 35 liters by moving a large piston within a cylinder. If the original pressure was 1 atm, what would the final pressure be? So, ito na nga po. Ayan. So, ito na lahat ng mga given variables natin since nawawala si P2 since final pressure yun um, yung equation na gagamitin natin is yung P2 is equals to P1 V1 T2 over T1 and then V2 then yung solution natin cancel out the same unit and then ang natira sa kanya is yung ATM no? or one standard atmosphere or one atmosphere no? i-multiply natin ang dapat na i-multiply so ito na yung naging result 7,152 ATM divided by 9,205 is equals to um, 0 0.78 atm. Yun na yung sagot natin for final pressure. And then, sa last sample problem natin for the combined gas flow, the pressure of a gas is reduced from 1,200 millimeter mercury to 8,000, ay, 850 no, millimeter mercury, no? Medyo nabubulil na ako din sa mga numero. <laughs> As the volume of its container is increased by moving a piston from 85 milliliter to 350 milliliter, what would what would be the final temperature be if what would the final temperature be if the original temperature was 90 degrees Celsius? So the original temperature matik na ilalagay natin siya sa initial temperature niya. So, ito na yung given natin. Kinonvert ko lang to yung 90 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. So, ayan. Required is yung T2 at ito yung equation na gagamitin natin at i-replace na natin lahat ng mga given variables base dito sa location sa allocation ng bawat um, given variables na naan dito sa ating equation para mahanap natin yung final temperature. I-multiply yung dapat na i-multiply, i-cancel out na mga dapat na i-cancel out na units. Since temperature yung nahanap natin, Kelvin ang matitira. So, Ito na nga yung naging outcome, no? 107,992,500 Kelvin divided by 102,000, no? So, it is, so, ang ating final temperature is 1,058.75 Kelvin na ating final temperature. So, nandito na tayo sa ideal gas, no? no? So, yung ideal gas, no? It is derived from actual experiments based on the properties of gases for good estimation of values in each variable. This equation defines the behavior of what an ideal gas should be. Most gases obey this equation no? closely at a pressure approximately 273 Kelvin or 0 degrees Celsius or higher than that. These conditions are known as STP or standard temperature and pressure. Ganito yun ha. Pag sinabi natin ideal gas law, hinahanap nila yung ideal basis kung ano yung magiging behavior ng isang um, ng isang gas. No? And then usually in in deeper concept, lalo na dito sa ideal gas law, meron tayong tinatawag na equation of state. No? Kabilang na rin na dito sa equation of state yung ideal gas law as well as yung pinaka um, masasabi ko bang komplikado or hindi mas pinahaba lang yung computation nito compare sa ideal gas law which is yung real gas law. So yung real gas law, um, dito natin makikita yung specific na value ng mismong behavior ng gas no? in terms of pressure or volume. No? Makikita natin yun. Pero hindi ko muna siya i-explain no? as of this moment. Pero nakagawa ko ng video regarding doon. So, i-check nyo na lang dito sa um, sa playlist natin. Nandun lang din siya. And then, um, mas mahaba lang yung competition for real gas law or Van der Waals equation ang tawag doon. 
mahaba yata pangalan ni Vanderwals, no? I think. And then, um, yun, kailangan may mga hanapin ka pa mga variables ng mga, ng mga gas part, mga gas molecules doon. Mas mahirap, mas, hindi naman sa mas mahirap, kumbaga mas mahaba lang yung competition niya compare dito sa ideal gas law. And then, sa ideal gas law, yung P, alam naman natin na ito ay pressure, yung V stands for the volume, and then yung N, ito yung amount of substance or moles, and then yung R, yung R na yan, ito yung universal gas constant. No? So, yung, yung universal gas constant natin is 0.0821 liter ATM per mole kel- Kelvin. No? So, kung ang pressure ay nangangailangan ng value ng KPA, no, ito na yung value na gagamitin natin, 8.31 kPa liter over or per mole Kelvin. Ito na yung formula na gagamitin, ay, ito na yung value na gagamitin natin kung kPa ang hinahanap. And then yung T, ito yung temperature. So, ganun lang din naman yung mga missing variables hinahanap natin. So, same lang din naman siya nung video natin for the ideal or equations of state. So, para mahanap natin yung P, kailangan natin i-cancel out yung katabi niyang variable which is yung V. So, cancel out the same units. Ayan. No? So, ang nangyari, no, kinancel out natin yung V and then, syempre, kapag nagka-cancel out tayo, kailangan natin malagyan ng denominator yung kanyang denominator yung kabilang variable. So, ito na yung value na hinanap natin for pressure which is pressure is equals to NRT over V. And then, sa volume natin, um, kailangan natin eliminate si pressure. Ayan. So, ito yung formula or yung equation ng volume. So, para mahanap natin yung amount of substance natin, so, eliminate natin yung katabi ng amount of substance or yung N, which is yung universal gas constant at saka yung temperature. Cancel out the same variables. And then, ito yung kanyang um, <coughs> nawawalang variable na. PV over RT is equals to amount of substance. Sa temperature naman, cancel natin yung N at saka yung R. So, PV over NR is equals to temperature. So, nandito na tayo sa sample problems no, ng ating ideal gas law. So, sample problem number one. If I have 4 moles of a gas at a pressure of 5.6 atm and a volume of 12 liters, what is the temperature? So given, ayan na nga, and then yung required is temperature. Ayan, nandito na lahat, hindi ko na i-explain pa. Ayan yung pressure, atm, and then yung volume, ayan yung 12 liters. Yung N or yung amount of substance is yung 4 moles and then yung universal gas constant natin which is applicable na nakikita or present naman siya sa lahat na naan dito. Ayan. And then yung required is yung temperature. And then yung equation is PV and R equals temperature. And then, um, multiply mga dapat ay multiply and then i-cancel natin yung mga same units. Ayan. Since ang natira is Kelvin, so according to our outputs, no? Or our results, six, ang lumaba, 67.2 divided by 0 0.3284 Kelvin. So, the answer is 204.63 Kelvin. So, ayun na yung answer natin. So, sample problem number two. If I have an unknown quantity of gas at a pressure of 1.2 atm, a volume of 31 liters, and a temperature of 87 degrees Celsius, how many moles of gas do I have? Okay, so, yung given natin is 1.2 atm, and nandiyan na lahat, no? And then, yung temperature natin, Yung 87 degrees Celsius, kinonvert ko siya into Kelvin. No? 87 plus 273 Kelvin. 273 is equals to 360 Kelvin. Ang record natin is yung amount of substance at ito yung equation na gagamitin natin. No? So, i-multiply. Yung mga dapat na i-multiply and then um, i-cancel lahat ng mga same units. Ayan. Since mole lang natira, so, nandiyan siya na nakalagay siya sa baba. And then, um, based on our results, 37.2 divided by 29.556 mole. No? Nakikita natin, i-divide natin siya. And then, yung kanyang answer is 1.26 moles. No? Yun yung kanyang um, amount of substance. So, sa una lang naman siya mahirap. Pero once na mag-gets natin yung, um, yung allocation ng, um, ng mga given variables na naan dito at kung paano natin siya i-execute through computation, mas madali lang talaga siya. 
or madadaliin lang din talaga tayo. Then sample problem number 3. If I contain 3 moles of gas in a container with a volume of 60 liters and a temperature of 100 Kelvin, what is the pressure inside the container? So, ay na nga yung given na uh, ano, given na uh, variables natin. And then since pressure ang hinahanap natin, gagawa tayo ng dalawang solutions, no? Gagamit i-apply natin yung dalawang given variables natin for universal gas constant na 0.0821 liter ATM per mole Kelvin or 8.31 kilopascals liter per mole Kelvin. No? So, ayan na yung equation na gagamitin natin. P, NR, P is equals to NRT divided by V. No? So, sa first solution, gagamit tayo ng 0.081. No? Ito muna yung ginamit natin. Ba, mamaya na tong sa second solution, yung 8.31. So, 3 mole times 0.081 times 400 Kelvin, no? Ayan. Since ATM man nawawala, since pressure naman ang hinahanap natin. So, ayan. 98.52 ATM based dun sa results natin sa multiply. Sa pagmamultiply natin ng given variables na naandito sa taas, didivide natin siya sa 60. And then, yung first answer natin is 1.642 ATM. Then, sa second solution natin, same process pa rin, pero pinalitan natin siya ng 8.31 kPa no liter per mole kelvin no so and kinansel out natin yung same units since nawaw ang uh, natira na lang is yung kpa since ang hinahanap naman natin is yung pressure is 9 9,972 9, kilopascals divided by 60 so the final answer is 166.2 kilopascals no? then sa last sample problem natin if I have 7.7 .7 moles of gas at a pressure of 0.09 atm and at a temperature of 56 degrees Celsius, what is the volume of the container that the gas is in? No? So, um, ayun na, given, nandito na yung given natin and then kinonvert ko lang yung 56 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. So, required natin is yung volume and then ito yung equation na gagamitin natin. Then yung solution, same process pa rin. I-multiply yung mga dapat na i-multiply, i-cancel natin yung mga same units. Since ang dapat, natin, ang dapat na matera dito is yung liter since volume ang hinahanap natin. So, according to our results, base sa ating pagmamultiply sa numerator or yung nandito sa taas, 207.98393 liter divided by 0 0.09. No? So, i-divide natin siya. Then yung kanyang final result or yung final answer for the volume is 2,310.93 liters. No? So, ito na yung kinetic molecular theory of gases. No? Nandito na tayo sa last part ng ating lesson. So, it is a model that accounts for the behavior of an ideal gas. The different properties of gases can be explained through the kinetic molecular theory. The basic assumptions of the kinetic molecular theory are the following. Una, gases are made up of tiny particles called molecules. These molecules are, are in constant, random, and straight line motion. The molecules will continue in their straight line motion until they collide with one another molecule or with the walls of the container base sa nakakita ninyo. Ayan. Nakakaliw tignan eh. And then, the collision of the molecules with one another or with the walls of the container gives rise to the gas pressure. The particles and the pressure the particles in the wall of the container neither lose nor gain energy during these collisions. All collisions are perfectly elastic. The molecules are considered point particles. This means that the particles have mass but have very small to negligible volume. The size of the particles is very small compared with the separation distance between them. Then number four, gas molecules have no forces of attraction or repulsion between them. No? And then all gases at the same temperature have the same average kinetic energy. Average kinetic energy is directly proportional to the absolute or Kelvin temperature of the gas. No? So, ito yung molecular properties of matter. So, in terms of properties, sa mass, no, they are both definite. No? Um, in some other textbooks, may nakikita ko, no, sa gases, yung mass nila is indefinite. No? So, gawin nalang natin definite or indefinite. No? Nilagay, ilagay ko nalang talaga dito. Pero, nakalimutan ko nalang ilagay, pero... Sinabi ko naman na pwede nyo rin gawing indefinite for some reason. Kasi may iba rin naman ako nakikita ng textbooks na gano'n. And then yung shape niya is definite sa solid. And then sa liquid, of course, the shape of the container as well as yung kanyang gases. 
terms of compressibility, solid, it is not possible. Sa liquid, it is almost negligible yung kanyang compressibility. And then yung sa gases naman, they are highly compressible. Sa fluidity, sa solid, it is not possible. Then sa liquids and gases, they are, they can flow. That because yung liquids and gases are the example of fluids. No? At hindi po ang solids. No? In terms of rigidity, um, sa solid, they are, they, are, they are high rigid and then sa liquids, they are less rigid and then yung sa gases, they are not rigid. No? So, sa diffusion, so sa solid, they are slow, sa liquid, they are fast and then sa gases, they are very fast. And the, then sa spaces between particles, they are most closely packed sa solid and then sa liquid, they are less closely packed and then sa gas, they are same lang din, ay hindi, magkaiba sila ng liquid. Sa gas, they are least closely packed. No? Then sa interparticle forces, sa solid, they are the strongest. Sa liquid, they are slightly weaker. And then sa gases, they are um, weakest or negligible. Sa density naman, sa solid, they, are, they have a highest density. And then sa liquid, they, are, they have a high density. And then sa gases, they have low density only. Then, sa kinetic energy particles, sa solid, they have a least kinetic energy particles. Sa liquid, sa liquid, they have a large kinetic energy particles. And then, sa gases, they have a very large kinetic energy particles. So, yun yung differences ng molecular properties ng matter in terms of solid, liquid, and, and then gases. So, ayun lamang po. So, Ayun no, ang haba ng lesson natin <laughs> within this uh, within this time. So hopefully may natutunan kayo dito sa video na ito and then I hope na yun na malapit na tayong matapos no. Dalawang lessons na lang and then kung meron kayong mga questions, clarifications or concerns, leave a comment below. And then um dito ko na tatapusin yung video na ito and then that's all for today. Goodbye. See you sa next lesson.